For this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to create an RGB split effect in Adobe After Effects, which will look something like this. You can use this effect to help you create a variety of different glitches or simply stylize your footage. So let's take a look at six steps to create this effect. So for my first step, I need to duplicate my text layer here and I need to create a layer for each color channel. So I'm going to create two duplicates and then to stay organized, I'm going to rename them. We'll call the first one red, our second layer green, and our third layer blue. So now we're set and ready to start this effect. So for the next step, I need to isolate each color channel on each layer. So to do that, I'll select my red layer and start with this one. I need to apply the effect channel mixer under color correction. So I'll apply channel mixer. And what this effect allows me to do is isolate each individual color channel. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to apply this to all of our layers here. Now for red, to isolate my red channel, you can see I can just go and manually type in zero for my green and zero for my blue. And now this is strictly red. So now I'll go through here and I'll do this for each layer. I'll turn off the red and then I'll turn off the blue. So now we have green and for blue, I will turn off red and I will turn off green. Okay, so we have blue, we have green and we have red. Now, as with RGB video signals or images, they use additive colors, whereas painting uses subtractive colors. So to create um, our composite image, I'm going to grab all of our layers here, and then I'll change the blend mode to add, since these are additive colors. Now watch what happens to our image. Now we see the composite, the white again. And if I grab one of these individual color channel layers, and I start to move it, you'll see that we have our RGB split here. So now we're ready to start messing around with our channels. To create this effect, I'm going to be using expressions. And the reason I use expressions is so I don't have to do a massive amount of work with keyframing by hand. And one thing about expressions is once you create the expression, you don't have a lot of control over what the expression is doing. So to gain more control over that expression, I need to create a control layer. So to do that, I'm going to create a new null object. And then I apply an effect on here. If you go down, you can see expression controls. I can apply a slider control. Now what this is going to allow me to do is that once I create my expressions and apply them to each layer, I'm going to be able to parent them to my slider control and then I'll be able to control it just by keyframing this asset here. Okay, so I have my control layer set up and I have all my color channels isolated. Everything's ready to go. Now it's time to add my expressions. But first, let me just quickly rename this layer, control, close this, and I'm going to select my red layer. And I'm going to hit shortcut key P to open up our position attribute. And what I'm going to do here is I want to add the wiggle expression to the position attribute of each of these layers so that each one of them will move around randomly. So to add an expression, I'm going to hold the Alt key and hit our stopwatch icon. Now we see a text box here, and I'm going to add the wiggle expression. So let's do something like 45, comma, 45. If you don't know about expressions or the wiggle expression, this is essentially telling this attribute that it's going to wiggle. There are two attributes here. There's frequency and amplitude. The first being frequency, the second being amplitude. So whatever we type in here, the first number is going to adjust the frequency of this change, and the second is going to adjust the amplitude. So now what we want to do, if I was just to leave it like this, we can see it's starting to take effect here, moving our, our red around. You can see it's moving quite fast, about 45 pixels quite quickly. So that's looking pretty good, but we want to have control over this. So how do we gain control? So I want control over the amplitude. I want my slider control to have control over the amplitude of each layer. So to do this, I'm going to delete my amplitude, and I need to open up my control layer here. So I deleted the, the amplitude of my expression here, but I need to have my cursor directly over the amplitude section. And now go over here and grab my pick whip, and I drag that over to my slider. And as soon as I release, you'll see now there's a new script in my expression here. And 
if I click out, we'll see that that's all set up, but you'll see there's no effect taking place. And that's because this is set to zero. If I, stay, if I grab my slider now and I start to move, you're gonna see, voila, now our slider is in control of this expression. However, we want, I'm gonna undo that, we want this slider to control all three of our layers here. So to do this, I can get a little bit of space here. So to do this, I'm gonna do the same thing to our other two layers. So I'm gonna grab the position here and I'll simply copy this expression and then I'll alt click the green position attribute here and then paste and then alt click on blue and then paste. And now if I move my slider control, it should move all of the channels accordingly, which it does. So I'm going to undo this and actually close this. Let's just take a quick look now at where we're at. Let's just move this a little bit and then play back and see what happens. Now we're seeing all of our channels are moving. Okay, now that we've got everything set up and ready to go, let me show you how you can quickly create some glitch effects. So you go over to your slider here and I can start to add some keyframes. We're at zero. I'm going to go two frames. I'm going to pump this slider control up well over 100. Go a few more frames, go back down to zero. And now that's going to quickly just jump up and glitch really quick. Now I could even copy these and just kind of paste them throughout. Maybe even expand one out here. Actually, let me take this one really far. This one's going to ramp up in speed. Okay, now let's have a look at what we've got here. Okay, some pretty cool effects there. Now you can really, the customization you can do with these is pretty pretty phenomenal. Like for just for instance, I could go over here and I could turn on motion blur and have a totally different look. And I could I could turn off motion blur for all layers or I could just keep a few layers on and get some really, really interesting, interesting effects here. Now one of the things you need to be aware of is that I'm doing this on text right now, so it looks totally different as, as when you do it on an actual video file. So let's go over here and look. I've applied this to a video file, and right now I don't have any keyframe set, but one thing you're gonna notice is I have my wiggle effect set pretty high. You're seeing the edges here. If I zoom out, you're seeing all the edges here. Now what can we do about that? Well, let me show you really quickly one way to take care of this is you put a motion tile effect on your color channels. So I'm gonna select the red, I'm gonna to go to Effect, Stylize, and select Motion Tile. And now with Motion Tile selected, I can change the output width and output height to 200, and then I can turn on, uh, let me expand this so you can actually see it, and I can turn on Mirror Edges. And now I'm gonna copy this, and I'm gonna apply it to both the green and blue. And now, there we go, our edges are taken care of, and now I can add some keyframes here. And let's see if we can get a quick glitch effect here on our video. Let's see how this looks. There we go. Right as the jacket comes on, we have a little bit of a cool effect. And again, I could stylize this as much as I want, turning on motion blur, get some crazy crazy looks.